In this lesson, we're going to look at a very important component that should be a part of every network, a firewall. A firewall is a software or hardware-based network security system that allows or denies network traffic according to a set of rules. Firewalls are typically used to protect networks or devices from attacks and unwanted or untrusted traffic. You can implement a firewall in two different ways. First, there's a hardware firewall. A hardware firewall is typically used to protect an entire network or one specific network segment. Firewalls are dedicated hardware appliances that contain all the hardware and software necessary to protect the network. Hardware firewalls are much more expensive than other types of firewalls, but they also provide the best performance. Software firewalls, on the other hand, are typically used to protect a single computer or device. Firewalls are commonly used to protect private networks by filtering traffic from the network and the internet. One of the main purposes of a firewall is to prevent attackers on the internet from gaining access to your private network. A firewall can also be network-based or host-based. A network-based firewall sits at the edge of your network and acts as a barrier between your entire network and the outside internet. Network-based firewalls are usually hardware firewalls. Host-based firewalls, on the other hand, protect a single system from unauthorized connections, and host-based firewalls are almost always software firewalls. In addition to protecting an entire network from attackers on the internet, you can also use firewalls to isolate and protect sensitive segments of your private network. For example, let's suppose we want to protect the servers that hold sensitive accounting data. We could create a special subnet for those servers and then install a firewall to protect that segment from unauthorized traffic that originates from within our own private network or any traffic out on the internet. In order to do this, we define a set of rules on the firewall to specify that only very specific types of traffic are allowed through. The firewall rules block all other traffic. These filtering rules on the firewall are called access control lists, or ACLs. The firewall scans incoming and outgoing network traffic, and it compares that traffic to the rules you've defined. Then it decides whether the traffic should be allowed or rejected. In fact, most firewalls deny all traffic by default. This is called implicit deny, and it's very important. Implicit deny is a security technique that blocks everything unless it is explicitly allowed. You have to manually specify what traffic you want to allow through that firewall. Everything else is blocked. For example, all IP addresses and port numbers are blocked except what's in the ACL. Not only is implicit deny a good security practice, it also makes your job as the network administrator a lot easier. Chances are you want to block a lot more types of traffic than you want to allow. There are several different types of firewalls that you need to be familiar with. We have packet filtering firewalls, circuit level gateways, and application layer firewalls. First, let's talk about packet filtering firewalls. A packet filtering firewall examines the information within each packet header. It operates at layer 3 on the network layer of the OSI model. When a frame enters a packet filtering firewall, the firewall removes the framing information to expose the IP packet contents within that frame. The packet information includes the data, the destination IP address of the packet, and the source IP address of the packet, as well as the source port and destination port. With a packet filtering firewall, you can define ACLs based on that information that's contained within the IP packet, including the source IP address, destination IP address, source port number, and destination port number. Every packet that comes into the firewall is compared to ACL rules you define. These rules specify whether to allow or reject these packets based on the network interface that the packet was received on, the direction of the communication, whether it's inbound or outbound, the source IP address, the destination IP address, the source port number, or the destination port number. For example, the firewall could be configured to allow all packets from a specific source IP address. Alternatively, maybe you could define an ACL that blocks all inbound traffic that's destined for port 22. Be aware that these are very simple ACL rules. You can define very complex ACLs with many different rules for evaluating packets. For example, you could block all packets through source IP address just from an external network and only allow communications from hosts that are on the same subnet as the destination host. Be aware that many routers actually provide a packet filtering firewall. They're basically a router and a firewall all in one, providing both functions. There's a second type of firewall you need to be familiar with. This is called a circuit level gateway. 
A circuit level gateway makes filtering decisions based on the session layer information, which is the session ID number. The firewall only allows packets that match after sessions. In order to do this, the circuit level gateway has to take advantage of the TCP three-way handshake. To establish a TCP session, a client computer first sends a request for a session with a very special packet called a SYN packet. The server responds back with an acknowledgement, an ACK, which says, yeah, I have a session available and you can use it. The client then responds with another acknowledgement called a SYN ACK, which acknowledges that it received the original session information and it wants to establish communications with the server. This is important because the circuit level gateway monitors this three-way handshake process to identify an active session, one that's set up, acknowledged, and in use. When a packet is received by the firewall, it'll move the packet header information just like a packet filtering firewall does. This time, it's going to examine the session information within that packet. If that session packet represents a legitimate setup session and it's currently active and in use, then that communication is allowed. If it finds a session ID that is not active, that was never actually created, or that's already been closed, then that packet is dropped. The final type of firewall we're going to look at is the application layer firewall. Messages that enter the firewall are typically composed of multiple packets. At the network layer, a packet filtering firewall examines each packet and makes forwarding decisions based on the ACLs you've defined. At the session layer, a circuit level gateway examines the session IDs associated with information across multiple packets. At the application layer, the application layer firewall actually takes all those individual packets and reassembles them into the original data. Then it makes forwarding decisions based on what's in the data. Let's look at an example. Let's suppose that this firewall is filtering HTTP requests or web page requests. An HTTP request can be something as simple as get this specific web document from this website. The application layer firewall reassembles that request when it comes through, creating the original document. After that's done, the firewall can go ahead and evaluate what's actually in that document, and then make filtering decisions based on what it finds. For example, the firewall could filter the website based on content. This could be as simple as blocking a specific URL, or it could use a list of predefined terms or words to specify what's blocked. This could be very useful if you need to block specific categories of websites, like online gaming, online gambling, or websites with adult content. Application layer firewalls are often referred to as proxy servers, which is just a specific implementation of a particular type of application layer gateway. A proxy server sits between a network and an end user. For example, we may have a network of computers over here that need to access information over here on the internet. The proxy server sits between the internet and these clients. All of the requests going to the internet from these clients are intercepted by the proxy server. The proxy server will take those requests and use application layer filtering to decide whether the request should be allowed or blocked. These filters could be based on the URLs being requested or the users that are making the requests. For example, you could configure your proxy servers so that only certain users are allowed to access the internet. You can take it a step further and only allow them to view certain websites. A proxy server may also be configured to cache frequently accessed internet content. When a user accesses a particular web page through a proxy server, it can actually cache that data locally. Then when another user on the internal network tries to access the same web page, the proxy server pulls the page out of its cache and delivers it to the end user without going out on the internet to get it again. That saves bandwidth. There's another type of proxy server called a reverse proxy. It works a little bit differently. Instead of filtering internal requests headed out to the internet, a reverse proxy handles requests traveling from the internet to internal servers. For example, here we have a reverse proxy server that's sitting in front of these web servers. Let's say a client out here requests access to one of these servers. Instead of that request going directly to the server, it first goes to the reverse proxy server. The reverse proxy server looks at the request, and then depending on what was requested, it will connect to the correct server. Basically, it creates a link between the client and the server. One thing to be aware of about reverse proxy servers, and proxy servers in general for that matter, is that they operate transparently. The client doesn't know that they're connecting to a proxy server. As far as it knows, it's connecting directly to the server over here, either on the internet or on the internal network, depending upon whether we're using a reverse proxy server or a traditional proxy server. 
One thing to remember is that reverse proxy servers can be used to cache information, just like a regular proxy. Also, reverse proxy servers can balance the load being placed on internal web servers. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we learned about different types of firewalls and the different ways that you can implement a firewall on a network.